In this video, we'll take a look at three muscles, the abductor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis, and extensor pollicis longus. These muscles move the thumb. These are distal, posterior forearm muscles that move the thumb. They're not the only muscles that move the thumb, however. We do have the muscles of the thenar eminence that'll also move the thumb, and we have flexor pollicis longus in the anterior forearm. But in this video, we're going to concentrate on the three distal posterior forearm muscles that move the thumb. Identifying these muscles can be kind of confusing for beginners. I found that if I remembered the order of these three muscles from proximal to distal, it helped me to easily identify these muscles. I use this to help me remember the order. Abductor, extensor, extensor, longus, brevis, longus. And then I slipped pollicis in the middle. These three muscles form the borders of the anatomical snuff box. It's been said that people used to sprinkle their snuff into this depression before snorting it. Maybe they used it as kind of a measuring spoon? Who knows? But this depression is bound by these three muscles. These three muscles are also included in a group of muscles known as the deep distal four, along with another muscle, the extensor indices. Let's take a look at these three muscles individually, starting with the abductor pollicis longus. The abductor pollicis longus is the most proximal muscle of this group. It attaches to the radius, ulna, and thumb. Specifically, it originates from the middle one-third of the radius, ulna, and interosseous membrane. Its tendon runs down past the anatomical snuff box and inserts onto the base of the first metacarpal, the one associated with the thumb. This is one case where the muscle is named longus, however, its tendon does not go all the way down to the distal phalanx. Usually when you see longus in the name of a muscle, it goes to the distal phalanx. When it contracts, it performs its name. It abducts the thumb, or pull that first metacarpal away from the palm as we see here. As is the case for all of the deep distal four muscles, this muscle is innervated by the posterior interosseous nerve and it receives its blood supply from the posterior interosseous artery. Extensor pollicis brevis is up next. It attaches to the radius and thumb. Specifically, the extensor pollicis brevis originates from the distal one-third of the posterior radius and interosseous membrane. Its tendon also runs down past the anatomical snuff box to insert onto the base of the proximal phalanx of the thumb. Extensor pollicis brevis and abductor pollicis longus both make up the lateral or radial border of the snuff box. An interesting thing about these two tendons is that they share a common synovial sheath. This means people are more prone to inflammation and injury here. Friction between these two tendons from excessive movements of the thumb can cause inflammation and lead to de Quervain's disease or stenosing tenosynovitis. When this happens, it makes it difficult to do this. And this actually is called Finkelstein's test. And it's performed as an orthopedic test to figure out whether someone has this de Quervain's disease. Now when the extensor pollicis brevis contracts, it performs its name, meaning that it'll extend the thumb, and it does so at the metacarpal phalangeal joint and carpometacarpal joint. Like the other muscles in this video, it's innervated by the posterior interosseous nerve and receives its blood supply from the posterior interosseous artery. Extensor pollicis longus is the most distal of the three muscles in this video. It attaches to the ulna and the thumb. Specifically, it originates from the middle one-third of the ulna and interosseous membrane. Interesting thing about this muscle is that the long tendon of this muscle will wrap around a bump on the posterior radius called Lister's tubercle. It does this to get extra leverage for pulling the thumb into extension. The tendon then inserts onto the distal phalanx of the thumb via the dorsal digital expansion. And this tendon also forms the medial border of the anatomical snuff box. The tendon, as it wraps around Lister's tubercle, performs like a pulley, so when the muscle contracts, it will act to extend the thumb. 
And like the other muscles in this video, it's innervated by the posterior interosseous nerve and receives its blood supply from the posterior interosseous artery. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider clicking like and subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to turn on notifications to get alerted to all my latest videos. For more helpful anatomy and physiology study resources, visit www.humanbodyhelp.com.